Okay, 9.30 interview. Showing up at 9.32. They're not gonna get no interview. How's it going? Doing good. Are you serious? Caleb's out here mowing the shop for the very last time. Last week here at the Mount Vernon shop, and we're off the new place. That is what you'd love to see on P4P. We're rolling out within a few minutes after the meeting. Let's go. So I don't typically do interviews, but this specific location, we had to start literally in a matter of 48 hours. And the GM that is currently here actually was just a fuel worker at the Bellingham shop for a couple years. And then basically was super loyal, super awesome. And when the opportunity arose, he became the GM literally overnight. It was like, I just called him up and I was like, hey, do you want to take the GM position? And he's like, sure. Because of that though, he hasn't been able to be to training. My general managers go to franchisee training as any other franchisee would. And so uh, he hasn't been to training yet. He's going to be there in a few more weeks. So I try, I've been trying when I come down here on Mondays to take something off of his plate, just because it's not really fair to him. He hasn't even been trained as a GM yet. And he's really assumed that role and have to step into shoes that he has not been trained fully for. So in a few weeks though, he'll be trained up and he'll be able to take a lot of those things off my plate. So the place that I did work for a little while, that was a uh, roof clean. Did that for a little bit, uh, ended up getting fired there. He sent me off on a job that I wasn't qualified to do and it didn't end up going well. So I'll call him the day. What, what do you think he'll say in terms of your, your overall performance there? I think he'll say he did a pretty great job. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then you just leave there because of seasonality, and then you went to the other plate, the so uh, other place? The, the main reason I ended up leaving was because one of my other bosses kind of got on my nerves a little bit. What he would do is he would basically undercut our jobs because we were based on commission. Mm -hmm. He would cut a little bit of that out and throw it towards the sales side of things so he could buff out his payment. Got it. So. Because you get basic base commission on it all. Yep. Got it. So when you do interviews, a couple of takeaways from that one was if they talk badly about their previous places of employment, really good chance they're going to be talking negatively about you in the future. It's not like things randomly change. I listen to why they left and if they're bad mouthing other employees or their manager, sometimes there are legitimate reasons. Like I'm not taking that off the table, but it's usually going to follow them and they're going to end up doing the same thing. So if she was talking about feeling undercut or uh, it sounded like there was quite a bit of drama with him and another employee. And then also the previous job where he's at, he, again, he was putting a lot of blame on the owner. And it's not to say that those things don't happen and there's horrible bosses and horrible managers out there, but it's likely if someone is complaining about their last manager in an interview, that they're gonna do the same thing to you. I did like the fact they just owned that he was fired on the last job. That is a big red flag, but it's something that I do value if they actually own up to it and they talk about why. If I would call a reference and they said, oh no, no they didn't just leave, they were fired. That is like, an immediate you know, no go for that employee. So the fact that he was fired, there's reasons why people get fired and it's not just or right. But the fact that he owned that, I did appreciate that. Now, some of you might have looked at my posture in the way I was sitting and thought that was a little bit unprofessional. What you probably didn't see in the video is the beginning. He was very, very nervous. He wouldn't look at me in the eye and he was just, it wasn't because he was being sketchy. He was just not comfortable. Notice after I crossed my leg and leaned back and what took a much more casual approach is when he leaned back and started opening up and talking about practice past experiences uh, and being able to have eye contact and actually communicate very well. All right, and then um, I don't know how much you kind of saw on our job posting, but any questions you had for me in terms of kind of what we do here or anything like that? Um, I did have a question actually. Mm -hmm. um, it was about the pre-employment uh, drug tests. Mm -hmm. So I did unfortunately smoke weed like a week or two ago. Okay. So I won't be able to pass that if you okay. ask me. Cool. All right. Another nonverbal that I picked up on is when he talked about the drugs, he did cross his arms, which typically if people draw the things into themselves or cross their arms, they're usually restricting something or hiding something. And so there's a very good chance that he is actually an avid drug user and uses it normally. And so even though he said it was, he used it like a couple weeks back, I can almost guarantee you use it every single day because the way that he presented that information was not in a very open manner. If you're trying to communicate something very sensitive, it's a really good idea to open up your palms and open up your hands. As soon as you do this and cross your arms, immediately people just have that sense that you are hiding things from them or withholding information. Very good chance that's what was happening there too. You gotta give credit where credit is due. And I just gotta say, Facebook, you're doing good things. 
updating the mobile app, updating the interface of the desktop version. The ads platform is starting to perform pretty good. I gotta say, Mr. Zuckerberg, I'm very happy. Keep it up. You might be able to stay up with TikTok if you keep doing this. And while I'm on this kick of free promotion for companies, this is definitely my favorite business credit card. They don't, I don't get paid to say this. This is Spark Business from Capital One, and it's a great cash back card. Very simple for small business owners to get new employee cards set up. I've used Chase, American Express, local banks, and honestly, this is still the easiest way I've ever had to get employee cards set up. So a little hack there, and again, not sponsored. I don't get a penny for this, but I would recommend them. Okay, 9.30 interview, showing up at 9.32. They're not gonna get no interview. How's it going? going good. Are you serious? Look, I understand that some people think I'm probably too harsh because he's two minutes late, but let me be very clear. If someone can't show up to their interview early, they will never show up on time to work, ever. And there's always an excuse. I hit a truck, I hit a train, my cat died, whatever it is, and they all sound plausible, but there will be more excuses to come if you let them on the team. And ultimately there are two things that get me very, very unhappy. Number one is abandoning the team. Number two is being late. And if I had to add a third, it'd be drama. Those three things I just have absolutely no tolerance for. And we just recently hired two new people at this location. And sure enough, they were both early, 10 to 15 minutes early to their interview. Look, if you're on your best behavior at an interview and you can't show up on time, what's gonna happen when you're not feeling good after a long day's worth of work? Are you gonna abandon your team? And literally, I have to have a conversation next week with some team members that abandoned the team. That is the highest degree of horribleness in my mind. Abandoning the team during a job, during the day, walking off a job site is unexcusable. Gotta give a deposit for the contractor who is actually working on the property right now. This is what we're working with out here. This is where the Airbnb is gonna be, the tiny house. That'll be a nice pad of gravel there. And you can see here, he is bringing in a whole bunch of five eighths minus gravel. Probably just gonna do three to six inches here. So it'll, you know, obviously lump out, but we don't wanna scrape this entire thing. If to scrape all this and haul it out of here, this isn't a headache. So we'll deal with a few potholes here, here and there, but all of this will be nice gravel, compacted. That will be for the Airbnb. You can see the uh, paint lines here is where the fence is going to be. Uh, for privacy and then there will be the driveway all along that fence to the main road so looks like they had some sort of like a playground with the wood chips in here and then around the perimeter they had these railroad ties these things are beast man these things are massive so we're gonna get rid of them use them somewhere maybe but uh look at this place man this is gorgeous absolutely gorgeous looking forward to it this will be a three-day project and we'll get out of here Now it has been said, and people have been quoted saying that mowing lawns is for stupid people. A lot of you lawn guys are just, you're just plain stupid. Like, let's be honest. The majority of the lawn people that mow lawns are just dumb, stupid people. <laughs> but this guy that you're looking at right now mows lawns. And he also, 10 months ago, made a video about how the stock market was going to crash, interest rates were going to go up, and the cost of renting real estate was gonna go up as well. Mark my words, it's not in two months, it's now. We are going to have a recession in the next 12 to 18 months. Mortgage rates have gone through the roof. Consumers are gonna start struggling to pay these inflated prices with the commodities and oil and everything going up. We are in for a really rude awakening. Now I would say I told you so, but even a blind squirrel gets a nut occasionally. As you all know, uh, we've been really working hard on the SBA loan for our headquarters, but I'm also working on a backup plan. And the backup plan is, do I have enough equity in all of my properties to build the headquarters without even getting an SBA loan? So this property behind me is one of my larger properties. It's a 10 unit apartment complex. When I bought it, it was a distressed property. It was probably, it was doing like eight to $9,000 a month in rental income. Now this property with two Airbnbs, and seven rentals will easily, easily do $18,000 per month 
in rental income. So just that alone, the valuation of the property on a commercial real estate deal goes up dramatically because most of the valuation mechanism of a commercial uh, loan is based upon the rental income, not so much comps because it's hard to get comps for a 10 unit apartment complex, especially in a residential area. I'm literally right now seeing if there's enough equity. I don't know if I have $3 million worth of equity to pull out from all of my properties because they're only gonna give you a line of credit on usually between 60 and 80% of the value of the property. So I'm actually looking to it now though, just to seeing like, hey, how close could we get? And is that actually a better option than even trying to go this whole SBA route where I've got to explain so much to them, which we're doing both. I'm, do I'm gonna do both, but I'm gonna just, I'm just seeing my options right now. I don't know if I have that much equity because I would need about four and a half million dollars worth of equity in order to make this work if I was able to pull, to pull out three million dollars worth of line of credit. I don't know if I have that much, but if I even get close, then I just get a bridge loan on the rest of it, that might work. Well, 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 what do we have here? Let's go. And so it begins. The metal building just showed up and it's being delivered. If you watched last week, we mowed this for the first time. This is the front acre or so of five acres that we own back into the back of the property. We do not have the building permit quite yet, but we ordered the actual structure, all the metal building components here like six months ago, just because of everything being backlogged so much. So it's just getting delivered today. Kind of an exciting moment. It'll be more exciting when we actually start digging and uh, get the building permit and get the loan secured, but definitely a cool step. Some crazy amounts of metal steel right here. So I was almost right. This is the front corner of the building. I had said I'd kind of cut out the shape last time. You can see just back into the uh, grass here. I'll walk this off. It's basically 100 feet long, 70 feet wide, 75 feet wide, I should say. So I didn't cut it out quite perfectly. I should have cut a little bit further out this direction and then a little bit more that direction. So a little bit bigger than I anticipated, but uh, it's gonna be a great one that's actually rolling here. Look how thick this is, man. That's just straight metal. It's crazy. This one beam is a thousand pounds. It's nuts. Mm -hmm. 